<sighs> Why aren't there more cars like this? Here it is, the BMW E36 Compact. Many people don't realize this, but this is the spiritual predecessor of the BMW 1 series. At the time this model came out, it had no competitors, since it was the only hatchback available with a front engine, rear wheel drive layout. This particular example is a 318 Ti and that means it's really a 318 IS. Yes, this features the same 1.8 liter, 140 horsepower engine. I, I know this doesn't sound like much by today's standards, but you really have to be awake when driving this car, especially if it's raining. And it gets better, because this has two intake bodies, with a bigger one for the low end and another smaller that activates over 4000 RPM to give it some more of the good stuff. Don't get me wrong, it's not too dangerous, but since you have no driver aids, you only really have ABS in case something goes wrong, but since this is a short chassis, significantly shorter than the E46 we had last time. You will notice that uh, that rear end will want to go away most of the time. Oh, and before you start saying, oh, it's not an, it has an M badge on an M car, it's not an M, not an M, not an M, not an M, no. It's not an M division car, but it does have a stock M pack from the factory and BMW style 18 wheels, so that badge belongs there. Visibility is pretty good. The wing mirrors are big, easy to look at and to look out of. The rear view mirror is the perfect size, it fits perfectly in the, the, rear, the rear window. This armrest is very comfortable and puts you really in position to operate the manual gearbox, which is also surprisingly good. I mean, for a car that has 210,000 kilometers, I won't do the math on the miles, but I think you will figure that out. The car is still solid and very much well together. The only modifications it has are a Pioneer stereo, sport springs and an LPG conversion. Hey, petrol is really expensive in Portugal. The Compact 3 series didn't have the same success as the sedan or coupe, mostly because of the looks, but it's aging well. The only thing that's a bit dated is the interior, which is more made out of hard plastics and it doesn't represent a big step up from the older E30. There are some downsides to the driving of this car. Uh, the leather on the steering wheel, I don't know if it's for being old, um, it gets slippery. Or maybe it's just me that I, I get my hands all, all sweaty when I drive cars that I'm not used to. Uh, but it can get a bit slippery and you don't want that. The sound insulation, although it's good, I mean it's it's very difficult to insulate properly those big tires and uh, uh, a 1.8 petrol engine. But the thing is, if you buy a car like this, you'll be prepared to, to listen to some soundtrack. 
Some other downsides include bonnet hinges which may pop out and fuel economy isn't exactly a strong point. I could advise you to get the diesel 318 TDS but that would be more like me recommending you to shoot your own knee. There is no play on the steering wheel or the gearbox for all the kilometers this car has made. That is kind of remarkable. Even the, the levers to operate the, the turning signals, they have no play, they are still tight, well put together. The controls for the lights are a little bit odd and old-fashioned, but you could get used to them. To wrap it all up, the BMW E36 Compact is a great choice as it is small, practical and fun to drive. Oh, and buy one now before everyone wants one, since they are going up in value.